Hi, welcome back to our channel. In today's video we will be discussing how banks can go bankrupt overnight. Banks play a crucial role in the economy by providing financial services to individuals and businesses. However, there are various factors that can contribute to a bank's failure. In this video, we will examine some of the primary reasons why banks can go bankrupt overnight, backed with real-life examples and statistics. We came up with top 5 reasons when banks can go bankrupt overnight and that are inadequate risk management, high levels of debt, liquidity problems, fraud, and economic downturn. We will discuss these points more in detail along with examples in the past. But before we start, I'd really appreciate a like and subscribe to my channel. Number 1. Inadequate Risk Management One of the significant reasons why a bank can go bankrupt overnight is the lack of adequate risk management. Banks are exposed to various types of risks, including credit risk, market risk, and operational risk. If a bank fails to manage these risks effectively, it can lead to significant financial losses. For instance, in 2008, Lehman Brothers, the fourth largest investment bank in the U.S., filed for bankruptcy largely due to inadequate risk management. The bank's exposure to the subprime mortgage market led to significant losses, which eventually led to its collapse. According to the FDIC Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, inadequate risk management was a significant contributing factor to the failure of banks during the 2008 financial crisis. In 2008, the FDIC reported that 50 banks failed, costing the deposit insurance fund more than $25 billion. Inadequate risk management was the primary cause of 25 of these failures, leading to more than $4.4 billion in losses. Number 2. High Levels of Debt Banks operate on a leverage model where they borrow funds from depositors and other sources to lend to borrowers. However, if a bank has high levels of debt and cannot repay its creditors, it can lead to bankruptcy. In 1990, the Bank of New England, which was one of the largest banks in the U.S., filed for bankruptcy due to high levels of debt. The bank's debt-to-equity ratio was more than 31, which made it vulnerable to financial shocks. According to the Bank for International Settlements, high levels of debt were a significant contributing factor to the failure of banks during the 2008 financial crisis. In a report, the buys noted that banks with high levels of leverage suffered more significant losses during the crisis than those with lower levels of leverage. For instance, the report showed that Lehman Brothers had a debt-to-equity ratio of 30 onion before its collapse. Number 3. Liquidity Problems Banks require a constant inflow of cash to meet their obligations to depositors and other creditors. If a bank experiences a sudden withdrawal of deposits, it can lead to liquidity problems. For instance, in 2007, Northern Rock, a British bank, experienced a bank run when depositors started withdrawing their funds due to concerns about the bank's stability. The bank was unable to meet its obligations, and the UK government had to step in to prevent its collapse. According to a report by the Financial Stability Board, liquidity problems were a significant contributing factor to the failure of banks during the 2008 financial crisis. The report noted that banks with insufficient liquidity were more vulnerable to financial shocks and were more likely to fail during the crisis. For instance, in 2008, Wachovia, one of the largest banks in the U.S., filed for bankruptcy largely due to liquidity problems. The bank had insufficient cash reserves to meet its obligations, leading to its collapse. Number 4. Fraud and Mismanagement Fraud and mismanagement can also lead to a bank's failure. In 2001, the Barings Bank, one of the oldest and most prominent banks in the UK, collapsed due to a massive fraud committed by one of its employees. The employee, Nick Leeson, had made unauthorized trades that led to significant losses for the bank. 
The bank's management was also blamed for inadequate oversight, which allowed the fraud to go undetected. In 2009, the Stanford Financial Group, a global financial services company, was accused of running a $7 billion Ponzi scheme. The company's founder, Alan Stanford, was convicted of fraud and sentenced to 110 years in prison. The company's collapse led to significant losses for its investors and creditors. Number 5. Economic Downturn economic downturns can also lead to a bank's failure. During a recession, banks may face increased loan defaults and a decline in asset values. This can lead to significant losses and a reduction in the bank's capital. For instance, during the Great Depression, more than 9,000 banks failed in the U.S., largely due to the economic downturn. During the 2008 financial crisis, the U.S. government intervened to prevent the failure of several large banks, including Bank of America, Citigroup, and J. Morgan Chase. These banks were deemed too big to fail, meaning their failure would have significant systemic consequences for the economy. So now what is the summary? A bank can go bankrupt overnight due to various factors, including inadequate risk management, high levels of debt, liquidity problems, fraud and mismanagement, and economic downturns. These factors can interact with each other, leading to a bank's failure. It is essential for banks to have robust risk management practices, maintain adequate capital levels, and have sufficient liquidity to meet their obligations to depositors and other creditors. By doing so, banks can reduce the likelihood of failure and contribute to a stable financial system. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found this video informative. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more interesting content.